So someone had contacted me on YouTube and asked if I could shoot a quick video on how logic relates to language and what I thought about logic. I guess logic is obviously a very complex, rich field of, of language and linguistics and philosophy. Rather than, I guess, try to review my perspective on that, I, I think what I'm going to do is I just want to talk a little bit about the work of Gregory Bateson, and this was from a piece that I did um, from the American Journal of Semiotics back in 2003. I think the key way to come at the question of logic and how it relates to language is to first address the issue of the word not. The word not, N-O-T, is one of the most complex words because we use it in many different ways and in many different levels of abstraction. And I think that was what Bateson was trying to draw out. Now, I'm not sure how well this will come through, but he, in a 1954 lecture, called The Message, This is Play. Now, this isn't the article called uh, Theory of Play and Fantasy from his more well-known Steps to an Ecology of Mind. This is a less well-known piece. Uh, he drew what he came to call the onion skin. Now, I'll see if I can maybe bring that up uh, a different way. Okay. okay, so this is the diagram that Bateson called, for discussion purposes, the onion skin. Uh, what he was trying to suggest here is that when we try to understand things, we commonly make classes. And so what he did was he says to people, he goes up to the board and he draws a circle on the board and he says, here, let me make a class for you. I will make the class of chairs. Okay, and he makes the little class of chairs. And then he says, I want people to tell me what are some of the not chairs. And somebody else tables and somebody else automobiles and somebody says dogs. And then he says, okay, those are all very good. How about tomorrow? He says, does it make you a little uncomfortable when I tell you tomorrow is not a chair? And somebody yells up, schizophrenic, and he goes, thank you. And then he begins. And his point here is that language always has a kind of onion skin where the not is used in two different layers. Not only do we draw a class of things that are to be included in the class, but then we distinguish things from the class from proper members that aren't in the class. This outer line is all of the improper members, right? The improper not chairs. And so the logician would tell you, you don't want to use the word not there. They would say tomorrow is neither a chair nor not a chair. It's of a different logical type. And they would make recourse to a notion of logical typing. Now, the history of logical typing is very important in the history of philosophy. Uh, we have Russell and Whitehead and the notion that a class can contain itself as a member. Bateson was well influenced by this, and he recognized very well that a class can contain itself as a member without falling into paradox. But he also wanted to suggest that the issue isn't resolved so simply just by making recourse to the logician's ideal. I think what Bateson is suggesting is that evolutionary process and the development of human cognition was only possible by somehow drawing this outer line. There is an outer line that we draw between the proper members of the not class and the improper members, but this is precisely the line that the logician will tell you you can't draw. Because somehow, if, you, if, where's, if we say the, the word chairs, the word chair is neither a chair nor is it not a chair, it's of a different logical type. So it's properly speaking, neither a chair, not a chair, it's of a different logical type. Bateson would suggest, though, that the problem is, is that in natural cognition, we fail to discriminate between these two levels. Now, I need to clarify this a little bit more, and I realize that I'm already four minutes in, so we'll see how this goes. Bateson wants to make a distinction, a very important one that he makes by appealing to Freud. It's the distinction between primary process and secondary process. Primary process is something, I guess, more akin to subconscious process. It could be akin to uh, pre-reflective engagement, uh, ready-to-handness in the Heideggerian sense. Whereas secondary process is more analytic. It is more careful, thoughtful. It's more what we could think of when we do think of the logician and the person who's thematically differentiating what something is from what something properly is not. What Bateson is trying to suggest is that in primary process, it fails to distinguish all from some and not all from none. 
Again, all from some and not all from none. And because it fails to distinguish those rigorously, we always end up drawing that second line. Now, the, uh, the logician would tell us, you can't draw that line without falling into paradox. Bateson's going to say, we, we have to fall into paradox. In fact, paradox is the root of language. Language itself is paradoxical because we can say what things are not. Part of the world that we live in is a world of making distinctions, and those distinctions aren't just simply categorical abstractions by similarity. Many of the ways that we classify and organize the world come from this hierarchy of logical types, and as soon as you try to represent those logical types, we start to notice that we end up with a class that has itself uh, as a member. Right? And it, it, it doesn't sound right, but uh, please look again. Go play the video. Try to see that uh, image. Hopefully that image came through. Stop the video. And um, if people want to see more, please contact me. I'm happy to give you a copy of the piece or direct. I'll put the list uh, for the bibliographic entry there. Okay, hopefully that uh, will clarify to this one viewer anyway who is concerned about how some of the issues of language and logic relate. Okay, thanks.